Okay, so I, okay, there's nobody outside. So, oh yeah, these five people. So I just said about the first exam, it would be here on the 13th. Okay, you have an assignment due this coming Thursday. So here we go. So let's do more problems, you know? So let's do another example. Oh, it is. Okay, so let me do the figure and then I'm going to ask you if you think it's statically determined or indeterminated. So, if you look at your class notes, not the last lecture, but the yeah, I think it was last lecture. The previous one, we saw this problem over here. Where we had a shear force over here. Vy. And here was a distance S. So do you remember solving these problems? If not, go back to your notes and tell me, was this one statically determined or indeterminate? So you say determined or indeterminate? This one that we did before, look at the notes. We did it, no? Yeah. So what was it? Data needed. Okay. So obviously, I'm not going to do twice the job. The only thing I'm going to do is add here one. Stiffener. So now what do you think this problem is? Indeterminated. So basically, I don't have you the notes, but basically what is the only difference on the procedure because between the statically determinated and statically indeterminated? Is that statically determinated means that we can just solve the problem doing summation of forces equal to zero and summation of moments equal to zero? Correct? But statically indeterminate means that we need to find an additional equation. So we did the problem where we had, remember, like two cells. It was two cells. So what was the additional equation we used? We used the additional condition to say that on each cell, the angle of twist was the same. OK? So basically, as we want to put here some same information as before here, as the previous problem, even though I might use some data from before, as is eight inches. Then we have B1 equal B6 equal to one inch square. B2 equal to B5 equal to B3 equal to B4 equal to 0 0.5 inch square. Then uh, okay, all the distances S one, two, S two, three, blah, 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 they are all equal to that. Okay? Which basically means that what? R is equal to five, no? So this is 10, this is going to be the radius. Can you turn off the lights on the top of the... Can I do that? Uh, is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now that I have this, uh, I want to point out something because somebody in me and that person was right. How about the uh, assignment that is you on Thursday? So what you know is that the assignment I took it from Dr. Radosta. Dr. Radosta using a different sign convention. So for example, Dr. Radosta, you have a structure over here. Uh, let's see, you have this structure for him. Okay, for him, for the notation he uses, the span wise direction is X. Okay, for us is Z. 
So the only thing you need to do is switch the X by the Z. Okay? That makes sense? Right. And then people try to look at Dr. Radest and they say, we don't follow. So <laughs> anyway, let's go over here. So we have this. So basically, okay, so uh Okay, so let's just say about the equation we're going to be using. So equations that we're going to be using. So first, we know what that Vx equals zero. We also know that this cross section is symmetric. So if you remember from the previous problem, that means that then the equation for the shear is going to reduce to minus Vy over Ixx. B sub R minus sub R. Okay, uh, we can say here from previous problem, but I'm still going to give details. Our sex we know is equal to y squared dA. So we can change this as summation of the B sub R's y sub r square between r equal to one to six. And this from the previous problem give us what? What did we get? If you go, I think we should get like 100 inch to your Okay, so now this is important part now. All right, so what is step one on the procedure? The important part for me is that you learn procedures. Okay, why do we need to make a cut? So that we know the shear flow at one location so that we can start doing the calculations, no? So in this case, we have two cells. So wait. So basically, we need to do two shear, two cuts. Now, one for this cell, if you want, and one for this cell, no? Okay? So technically, you can do it anywhere you want. But, okay, there's always one place that's a little bit easier than another one. So let me here redo the, a little bit the figure. Okay, so by making this start, that gives you a starting point about this cell, no? And now we need another starting point for this cell over here. So we can have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, we know this will be here. What is the name of this line over here? Neutral axis, what happens on the neutral axis? What is the definition of neutral axis? What is it? These are important, important concepts. Somebody ask you, what is the definition of the neutral axis? Neutral axis is a location where the bending stresses will be zero. Okay? Uh, okay, so here, because of the notation, I'm gonna specify one thing. Here we can have, you, can, you see that we can go from three, four in two different ways, no? We can go three, two, four straight, or we can go around the, um, Circle here or half circle. So let's say this one, let's say this means that uh, Q34S equal to zero. And this one, this would mean Q23 equal to zero. Okay, so this will be equivalent of doing what? This will be equivalent to do, remember we say statically in 
means that you need to use the summation of force equal to zero and summation of moments plus an additional equation. So the equation that's equivalent to the summation of forces is to find the Qs. So let's say, let's start by uh, Q23. So let's do Q23 is equal to zero. Now, I go around this cell over here, okay? What will be Q34? Will be minus Vy over Ixx does what? V3Y3, so will be minus 10,000 divided by 100. V3 is equal to what? 0 0.5, and what would be y sub 1, or y sub 3? Okay, so you do this calculation, you can cancel the two zeros, so it's 25, so, so 2.5, so at the end this will give you times 1,000, okay, we give you negative 250. Pound per inch. Okay, next, Q45 if I look at the figure, should be equal to what? Q23 plus Q34S minus Vy over Xx of what? Before Y4. So over here, what do we know about Q34S? Zero. So basically, this is going to give us that this should be equal to negative to fifty minus ten thousand over one hundred. What is before? One five. And what is y four? Now we go down, no? So it should be nearly five. So if before we had 250, now this is going to give us what? Zero, no? Does that kind of make sense? Remember the first VY is going on the up direction. So what should be the member resisting initially would be this one, no? Yeah? Which are on the direction of the force. Okay, so next one we're going to do Q. Five, six. So Q56 is going to give us Q45 minus Vy over Ixx. Is that Q23 in the line? That was supposed to be Q34. Uh, Q34, correct. Q34, thank you. Q34. So you're going to be Q45 minus Vy, B5, Y5. So we know Q45 is zero minus 10,000 over 100. B5 is 0 0.5. And what would be Y5? Negative five. So this one is gonna give us what? Two hundred and fifty. Range. Okay, uh, let's do one more over here. Q, then we go to Q56, Q61. We'll be equal to Q56 minus Vy over Ixx. B6 y sub 1, so it should be equal to 250 minus 10,000 divided by 100. B6 is, now we need to be careful because B6 is 1. And what is, oops, what is, what is 6 over here? Sorry, 6 and 6, okay, here. What is y sub 6 is 95. 
So this is going to give us, again, uh, 750 I'll be zero. Okay, so, all right, so we went here to here, here to here, this one we know is zero, we went from here to here, here to here, so the last one we need to do is Q12. So finally, Q12 is going to be equal to what? Q56 minus VYIXX V1Y sub 1, which this would be equal to well, Q61. Sorry. I don't know what I'm doing here. It's 61 here. So it will be 750 minus 10,000 over 100. D1 is 1. And what is Y1? 5. So this gives you a value of 250 pound per inch. Okay, what is step two? How do we call that one? I think we call it calculate shear flows. Is that the way we call it? Please go and check because evaluate, evaluate shear flows. Okay, so. So basically now what happened? Now we need to close our perception. So remember, we now it's closed. So what's going to happen because we close it? We're going to assume one shear flow on one cell. And another shear flow on one of the other cells, no? Okay, and if you remember again, this will be the neutral axis. And basically now if you want, uh, let me write it down. This will be Q bar one, two, Q bar two, three, Q bar four, five, Q bar five, six, Q bar six one, Q bar three four, Q bar three four S. Okay, on the notation basic. Okay, so if we look at cell one, which is one of the semicircle. What are you gonna have? You're gonna have Q bar three for S gonna be equal to what? Q three for S plus Q one. What is Q three for S? From before, what is it? Zero because we're in the class. So this will be equal to Q one. All right, so that one was easy. It's basically the only one. Okay, let me do. Okay, let me do now. 
uh, cell two, and then I do the common one. Cell two, okay. This one I leave it at the end because this one is common to cell one and cell two. So I do first cube bar four five. Will be equal to what? Q four five plus what? Q two, no? What is Q? What do we find for Q four five before? Zero. So that means that this one's going to be equal then to Q two. Then I do Q bar. 5, 6, similarly, would be Q, 5, 6, plus Q, 2. What do we have for Q, 5, 6? 250, so we can do this. We go around Q, 6, 1. So Q, 6, 1, we have 750. Plus Q2. Q bar 1, 2 will be Q1, 2 plus Q2. So that one should be equal to what? What is Q1, 2? Uh, 250. Am I missing one? Four, five, five, six, six, one, one, two, yeah, Q two three, Q bar two three would be Q two three plus Q two. What is Q two three? Zero, zero, that we we made a cut. So that gives you this will be equal to Q two. Okay, now I'm gonna look here at the common flange or common, common stiffener or flange, whatever you want. Common member, doesn't matter. So it's basically three, four. So let's see. Well, the figure Q bar three four should we go to what? So Q three four from before, but now we need to be careful. What do I need to put? We go from three to four. So is it going to be plus Q one or minus Q one? Okay, because it's minus because we get on the opposite direction. Now we'll be plus or minus Q two. Plus Q two. Okay. All right. So now, what what was step three? I don't know if we have to. I don't know. I do was what, what we did the, the other times. Was step three apply the moment equation now or not? Yep. Step three. Just trying to make the triangles consistent. So here will be a grade. So we will be a grade, I guess. External <laughs> and internal moment. So basically, this step would be equivalent to do summation of moments equal to zero. So over here, I think we wrote we're going to do summation of moments external about a certain point will be equal to the summation of internal about a certain point. So if you remember, we have different choices to do this. Okay, let me redo a figure. I want not to redo a figure, but uh, maybe I'm not gonna redo the figure. 
So over here, what we're gonna do because I have the data, but if you want, remember the last time we said we did it two, we did it two ways, no? Option one was to take the moments about point A over here, which is the center, or we took the moments from point six and use the moment equation. Okay, you remember that? Okay, so we're gonna do the option one, which is taking moments about point A, only reason because of the data, but we can redo it if you want to practice. So about point A, over here, A, and remember counterclockwise will be positive. Right, maybe let me redo here a quick figure. I think figures never hurt. Right, but I might not be one, two, four, five, six. So the main reason why I'm redoing the figures because remember we have here the force V Y at a distance S S equal to eight. This is our natural axis. This is our point A. And what do we have over here? We had Q bar one, two, Q bar two, three, Q bar four, five, Q bar five, six, Q bar six, one. Two by by three four two by three four s. Okay, always figures, figures and figures. Okay. One thing, guys, is that I'm always I'm thinking about that, about the procedure. And the same thing. When I see one equation, I want to see that the equation comes from a figure, no? Does not come magically. I'm looking, okay. So basically here, what we need is you take moments. So let's, let's do here the external moment first, okay? So let's say the summation of external about point A will be equal to what? So we know it will be dy, okay? Now, will, be, will, will that moment be progress or counterclockwise? We'll go counterclockwise, no? So is that positive or negative? What is it? Positive again. What will be the value of the arm? Will be the distance S12 plus S23. Minus S. Now I'm trying to put symbolic, no? So telling values. So S12 is 10, S23 is 10, S, and the distance S we say was 8. Okay, now obviously it comes a one, there's a bit more involved. So the summation of moments, internal about point A. Will be equal to what? So let me call maybe that distance here h. I like to do symbolic stuff, okay? Distance to natural axis h. Okay, so over here, uh, right. So let's start. Q one two. What be the moment given by Q12? Q bar 1, 2. This is a shear flow. So in order to make it a force, what do we need to do? Multiply by the length. Now, what is the arm? H. 
And now uh, we create a counter calculus, no? Now we do plus, I go one. Q bar two three. I do this one S two three. That will be the value of the force. What will be the arm? H again. Okay, now uh, let's go first for Q45, okay? Let's do the easy ones first. So then I go down plus Q bar for five S for five times H, no minus H, no? Because we look at the moment, no? All right, perfect. And then we have plus Q bar five six S five six and the arm will be H. Keep adding around. Now I need the plus Q bar six one times S six one. This time will be the arm. S, I mean, whatever you want, S45 plus S56, so S12 plus S23, no? Yes? So let's say S12 plus S23. And what is the one that I'm missing over here? Q bar 34S. So now, what is the distance? What distance is being applied? Uh, what is the half of the perimeter? Two pi r, so half would be pi r, no? And what would be the r? R. Okay, this term over here should be equivalent to what if we didn't correct? If remember, we could use the expression 2a q bar, we should be equal to what? 2 times pi r square over 2 times q bar, no? This is give, give, gives you what? Pi r square. Q, what do we get with this expression? Pi r squared Q, no? Okay, you can do the one. Okay, now, I'm not gonna write it down, okay, here, so you better pay attention to this. So, what is Q bar one, two? It's 250 plus Q2, no? What is Q bar two, three? Q2, what is Q bar four, five? Q2, what is Q bar 56? 250 plus Q2. What is Q61? Q six one? Q bar six one. 750 plus Q2. And then this would be, uh, sorry, this would be Q bar 3 for S. I mean, if I put it here, 3 for S. And then we have this one that would be Q3 for S. Q bar 3 for S is Q1. Okay? So we substitute all these values into that equation, what we get is what? Well, let me see if I have it here. So, okay, so now that means that so that when we do the summation of external equal to the summation of internals about on A, this is going to yield to the equation minus 400 Q2 minus 25 pi Q1 equal to 55,000.
Okay, so this is our equation one. So what happened? We have one equation. How many unknowns we have in that equation? Two. So what does that mean? That in order to solve, we need to find an additional equation, no? So from where are we going to find an additional equation? Remember that's step four. What is step four? So I guess it's additional equation. I don't know, but it should be additional equation. What is the condition we're going to use to find that additional equation? Go and look on the notes. I mean, everything should be on the notes. Okay. Uh, angle of twist must be the same in each cell. Okay, so what does that mean mathematically? That means that, and you see here I use D theta DZ because this is the span one direction of the cell one, needs to be equal to the D theta DZ of the second cell, okay? Well, here where, that way I can go to the next line, where D theta DZ, the general equation is one over two A. Again, this is one equation that you probably maybe remember from structures one, GT DS. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Let's do this cell one. So what is cell one over here? Cell one is this one over here, this section, that will be A over here. That is A1. That should be A1. Where is the A1 of the circle? I mean, I hope you apply it because you never know, because otherwise you're going to be in trouble. Exam is close notes. Just let you know, okay? So I hope this, you're just quiet because you are hungry or tired. All right, so this will be pi r squared over two. All right, so that's it. So for cell one, if I rewrite the equation, we have d theta dz of one is one over two a one integral of q, say here will be q bar, gt ds. Okay, so in this problem, we did not give it to us, but let's just say that we're gonna have one over two a one, that we know what it's equal to. Everything is made of the same material, so same torsion, modulus of elasticity, and we did not say anything, so we're going to assume that anything has the same thickness. Okay? Every single part. So basically, that means that now, the only thing we have left over here is to integrate the Q bar DS. So if we do that, this is going to give us what? 1 over 2 A1 GT Okay, what are you going through that element here? 
What do we got? We beat Q bar. Three four no times S three four no. Okay. Guess what? Q bar three four S. Now what is the distance that is going? By R. Okay, so basically, okay. so basically, this term over here will be the uh, one, and after here, this will be Q bar three four, Q bar three four, as it is, for the angle of twist of so on. Uh, am I missing anything? Well, that's it. I think that's it, no? Okay, we do the same thing for cell two. So let's see, what is cell two? So I would be pretty easy, what should be the area over here? What should be the area? Let's see, we have one, two, three. So it should be, maybe I should have used more space, but basically it will be uh, S12 plus S23 times S, let's say, 61, no? Yeah, I have a rectangle. Okay, and once again, you're going to have Q bar 1, 2, Q bar 2, 3, Q bar 3, 4, Q bar 4, 5, Q bar 5, 6, Q bar 6, 1. Okay, so as before, I'm going to say the general equation is d theta dz for cell 2 will be equal to 1 over 2 a2 interval of q bar gtds. But now I'm going to skip one line. Okay, I think by now it should be obvious it's going to be equal to 1 over 2 a2 gt times what? So I got one, what should I get? Q bar 1, 2 times s 1, 2 plus Q bar 2, 3 s 2, 3 plus Q bar 3, 4 s 3, 4 plus Q bar 4, 5, S, 4, 5, plus Q bar 5, 6, S, 5, 6, plus Q bar 6, 1, S, 6, 1. Okay, and once again, what are the expression for all those Qs? All those Q bars are going to be equal to these values over here, no? Okay, so I'm not going to do that substitution. Okay, so now we're going to say so equating uh, let's say d theta dz one to d theta dz2 
Okay, so do I need to write it down? Uh, let's try to write it down here. Uh, okay. So this is gonna give one over two A1 GT. All I'm doing this is so you see that the G and the T and the two will cancel out instead of just saying it. So here we have Q bar three, four, S34 plus Q bar 34S times pi R. Okay, I know this stuff should be equal to 1 over 2 A2 GT of Q bar 1, 2, S1, 2 plus Q bar 2, 3, S2, 3 plus Q bar 3, 4, S, 3, 4, plus Q bar 4, 5, S, 4, 5, plus Q bar 5, 6, S, 5, 6, plus Q bar 6, 1, S, 6, 1. Yeah, I know I'm going to small because I want to make sure that it's going to fit in one line. Okay, so the only way that I did this extra step is to show you that here you have the two will cancel with these two, the G will cancel and the T will cancel, no? Okay, so obviously you substitute A1 and A2 by this two expression over here, and you carry the algebra. This is gonna give you that, dun, 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 1.41, Five nine four Q one minus seven point three eight nine four Q two equal to one three three five point seven four. And let's say this will be our equation two. Okay, so now what do we have to do? Uh, is it a new step? Yeah, I think at the end, uh, okay. So now what do we do? We say uh, solving the system. So let's see, what was our first equation? Minus 400 Q2 minus 25 by Q1 equal to 55,000 and the 1.41594 Q1 minus 7.3894 Q2 equal to 1335.74 So we saw that system, this is gonna give that Q1 is equal to 111.51 at the inch, and Q2 equal to minus 159.40 that'll be perfect.
I guess we have what the step what do we do before step four? Okay, so uh, so you want step five. I mean we already did it. Did you want? But if you want with this solve, we already solved for the unknowns, but either we had a step five or not. Okay. Do we add a step five? If not, we don't put it. No? Oh, so forget about the step five. Right. Okay, so basically, at the end, what we need to do now, now that we know the Q1, oops, now that we know the Q1 and Q2, what can we do? We can go back to these initial equations now for each cell and find will be the Q3 for S and Q2. So let's see over here. So the final. Shear distribution is what? So I'm just going to copy right now the same expressions that I have over here. So, and then we do the calculation Q bar three for S. I'm just copying these lines, okay? That's what I'm doing. So, this would be what? Uh, we know this was equal to Q1. Uh, we knew Q bar. Four five was equal to Q two. Q bar five six equal to two fifty plus Q two. Q bar six one equal to seven fifty plus Q two. Q bar one two, 250 plus Q two, Q bar two three, equal to Q two, and Q bar three four, equal to Q uh, equal to, uh, well, what's Q three four? We didn't do that one. But what's Q three four? So this one was minus, maybe we can add this, should be minus 250 minus Q1 plus Q2. Okay, if you want, we didn't put that one, forget to put Q34, Q34 is negative 250. So this one is gonna give us then uh, negative 250 minus Q1, just Q2. Okay, so what is that going to give us? So what do we find for Q1? Q1, we say was equal to 111.61. So Q2 we found equal to negative 159.40, okay? I'm just looking here at these results. Okay, we just stop. Now I'm probably gonna start copying. So this one will be equal to 90.6. The next one gives you 590.6. This one will give you 90.6 minus 159.0 and finally this one minus 520 and nine let's not forget the units L the inch Should be what page? I don't think. Okay. 
Okay, so at the end, what is our distribution? If we summarize everything in one figure, But let's see, Q12 is positive equal to 90.6, 23 will be going from three to two, uh, 159.40, Q34S, One fifteen point one 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 point fifty one four five will be going from five to four and that should be equal to what the one fifty nine, no? Yeah, one fifty nine point four zero five six is positive. And that should be equal to 90.6. 6, 1 is positive as well. So, okay. 6, 1 is 590.6. And Q34 S is going, oh, I did that one. Q34, I didn't put it, no? Oh, that one is, okay. The Q61 is sorry, is 590.6, yes. And the Q34 is going what? Will be going up, no? Going from 4 to 3 because it's negative. And that one should be Okay, any questions? Yes. Yeah. One problem, we have to find the centroid. Is that like for these problems that you gave us? We're not finding the centroid. Is there like a specific equation you want us to do? Yeah, that's what I'm not. Good question. One, two, three, two. Oh, so let's start over here. So is that because the assignment is not symmetric? Is that what you're saying? If the cross sections are not symmetric. Uh, if the cross sections are not symmetric, the position of the neutral axis must be located by. Finding the centroid of the cross section. So maybe let's do like 
One more example here. So let's see over here, I don't know, B1 equals B2 equal, uh, so basically it needs to be no symmetric, so B2 equal one, B3 equal two, and B4 equal one, okay? So let's say central location. So if somebody asks you, how do you find the central? And then you specify what happens at the central. How do you find it? So if you need to find the central of a marker, how, how do you find it? You hold it until what happens? Until what? On the equilibrium, but what type of motion are you removing? Moment. Okay, so the moment is related to the rotation, no? Okay, so basically if you think about it, you can say that let's say the X, uh, yeah, would be X, general location of all The different areas, no, needs to be equal to the summation of the x of r's, b sub r's, no? This is the same as saying uh, y cga will be equal to the summation of the y sub i, a sub i. So basically, you might remember the equation, uh, okay. YCG, this is what I try to think that you remember. It will be equal to the summation of each one of the parts divided by the total area, okay? If you remember now, this is not important, okay? I, mean, you wanna, I know you're going to write it down no matter what, because whatever I write, you're going to write it. <laughs> remember, I try to do. So, similarly, what would be the central on the... What should be the central on the y direction? You will do the same thing, y bar, summation b sub r's should be equal to the summation of the y sub r's b sub r's. Okay, so maybe we need to put something in dimension here. So let's say this length here is 10 inches and you want the height to be also, you want to change the height, so you want to do it 10 inches. Let's maybe do a 12, so at least it would be a different number. And I'm not going to have the numbers. You might have to do the calculations, but I do symbolically, and that's it. So let's say, okay, so we want to find the X location. How do we do it? So let's find, so using first, let's say, using first X summation B sub R's equal to the summation of the x sub r's b sub r's. So when we do this, we need to select a starting location. So where do you want to use the origin? Point three in the middle, I mean, point two. Let's say we start at point three, no? Let's say it's of reference points. Is three. So basically, what are we trying to do? Find we're trying to find the location of the neutral axis in this direction. No. Yeah. Or if you want the CG. So 
So what you have, you have X bar. What is the summation of all the areas? B1 plus B2 plus B3 uh, plus B4. And that should be equal to what? What should be, what will be X3 and X2? We we'll take X3 as a reference point. That should be X3 and X2 if 3 is a reference point. Zero, okay? So basically, this will give us what? X4. So we give us X4, we want then we compare values. X4, B4 plus X1, B1, no? So in this equation, maybe you can do it for me. So we have X bar will be equal to X4, B4 plus X1, B1, divided by B1 plus B2 plus B3 plus B4, no? Okay? I mean, then you can put the values, no? You see how is that? Okay. So next, uh, next, So this will give you what? This will give you the distance of, this will give you this distance, no? Okay? Now, if you do the same thing for the y, it will give you y bar summation b sub r will be equal to the summation of the individual b sub r, y sub r. So again, we're gonna take reference points Is three, don't change it. I mean, you can change it, but then I wouldn't do that, okay? Now, what are we trying to find? I don't know what it is, okay? So I completely make up the location. We're gonna be finding the Y bar, no? Okay, so what are we gonna have here? They give us Y bar times B1 plus B2, plus B3, plus B4, and this should be equal to what? So this time, what will be Y3 and Y4? Zero, no? So we need to do then, we'll have Y2, uh, what did I use before, yeah, Y2, B2, plus Y1, B1, and from here, we can solve for y bar that will be equal to y2 b2 plus y1 b1 divided by uh, what b1 plus b2 plus b3 plus b4. Okay, next we have to calculate the moments. Of inertia, so I'm go just gonna write down the equations here, okay? You wanna do it? We can do it, so for example, we wanna find the IXS. What is the physical meaning of moment inertia? Is resistance about Rotation, resistance to rotation. No? So the IXX would be the, this one here. So what is the equation you need to use here? So the equation is what? Y squared dA. So in your case, it would be equal to what? The summations of the B sub R's Y sub R squared. But now, once you know the location of the natural axis, what will be the distance? What will be that distance here? It will not be 12 divided by 2, no? It will be whatever is the location, no? Yeah? Okay? You do similarly for this one. So these ones are the easy ones.
Okay? This surgery is straightforward. The one that is sometimes a mess is this one. That would be that one. Is x, y, d, a. So here you see this is square, no? And this is square. So really the sign doesn't matter. All right? But now what's going to happen for this one? For the i, x, y, the sign is going to matter, no? So you need to be careful with that one. Do you answer your questions? Okay, so one thing, start early the assignment because I guarantee it's gonna take you at least twice or three times the time you think it's gonna take you. And the main thing I also recommend to use MATLAB. Okay, if I was you, do the talk for one of the ones that we did in class, check it out, and then change it so that you can work out with the one of the assignment, no? All right. I have um, a few questions. Um, yeah. Yeah.